Ever wondered how manga and webtoon artists draw intricate hairstyles week after week? The secret isn't magic, it's the power of custom brushes in Clip Studio Paint. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make your own brushes that create 3D-like stylized strands and fully shaded and outlined locks to fit your style and save you tons of time. Pseudo 3D Hair Brush Let's begin with the simpler type, which I like to call the Pseudo 3D Brush because it creates shaded strands that look dimensional with minimal effort. Draw a black oval on a raster layer, then duplicate the layer and invert it to white using Ctrl-I. Offset the white shape slightly from the black, then merge both layers. Right-click the merged layer, select Convert Layer, and set Expression Color to Gray. To register the brush tip, go to Edit, Register Material, Image, set the name, check Use for Brush Tip Shape, and pick a folder. Eventually add tags. Now, duplicate any basic brush to use as a base. Click the Spanner icon to open the Subtool Detail Palette. Go to the Brush Tip tab, select Material, and choose the one you just made. Because the tip was grayscale, the black part will use the main color, and the white part uses the subcolor. You can adjust thickness and set angle to respond to pen tilt. In the Stroke tab, set the gap to minimal for a smooth stroke. Your brush should now look like a flowing ribbon. Finally, go to the Starting and Ending tab. Check Brush Size under Dynamics, set it to Specify by Length and push both the starting and ending sliders to the max. This makes the ends of your stroke taper into fine points, perfect for hair strands. Complex Hair Strand Brush Now let's create a more complex variation. The method is the same, but instead of a single oval, draw three black blobs. Make sure they vary in size and placement to create a more natural effect. Like before, duplicate, invert, offset, merge, convert to gray, and register it as a brush tip. To save time, you can duplicate the pseudo 3D brush we just made and simply replace the brush tip with the new one. If your brush strokes appear jagged, go to the Stroke tab and set the gap to Fixed. Adjust the value until it's smooth but still performs quickly. These brushes are excellent not just for concepts, but also for blocking in the base of painted hair, short or long, curly or straight. Add color variation with color jitter. Want your hair to look more colorful? Head over to the Color Jitter tab and turn on Change Brush Tip Color. Raise Blend with Sub Color and link it to Pen Pressure or add it to the Automatic Dynamics in the Starting and Ending tab. You can also tweak you or combine both settings for unique color effects. Save your brush. When you're done tweaking, right-click your brush and select Save as default to keep it safe from crashes or sudden shutdowns. Adding Outlines. For a more cartoon-like effect, you can give your brush strokes a border by enabling border effect in the layer property palette. You can also try the watercolor edge option in brush settings, though its color can't be changed. Webtoon Hair Brush Let's go further and create a brush that draws entire locks of hair with outlines and shading. These are fantastic for speeding up your workflow when working on webtoons or manga. Blocking in and line art Start with a large canvas. Mine was 5,000 pixels high. Use tall rectangles to guide the size of your brush tips. Two thick and one thin strands should give you enough variety. Draw on a vector layer for easy editing. You can block out the shapes with an oval tipped brush like the one we created earlier. I used a similar brush, which is available in my assets. Hair can often be simplified into a ribbon like shape. I prefer to add more volume by giving that ribbon a bulging, rounded form and large, oval brushes are perfect for this. Once you've got your basic shapes, add parallel curves following the same flow, and use the Pinch Vector Line tool to tweak them. Try to create a mix of thick central strands and thinner ones surrounding them. Now go over the shapes with clean line art on a new vector layer. Adjust your brush stabilization as needed. Use gentle, curved strokes and adjust with the Pinch Vector Line tool. Overlap strands and vary their thickness for a dynamic look. Use the mesh transformation to tweak the shapes if needed. Use correct line width to thicken lines in shadow and thin lines in the highlights. Coloring. On a new layer, fill the strands with color. I used a custom fill tool with the line art folder set as a reference. You can grab that tool from my assets too. Add shadows on a clipped layer if it fits your style. 
Here I used colors for preview but you can draw in gray from the start. Mask the strand roots with a soft brush. Convert the line art to black, base to white, and shadows to light gray. Merge all parts into one layer and convert it to gray mode. Make a rectangular selection of the largest strand, leave a little blank space at the root, and register it as a brush tip. Without deselecting, move the box to the next strand and repeat. Creating the brush. Duplicate a basic brush, and in the brush tip tab, load all three strand materials. In the stroke tab, check ribbon and set the method to random so each stroke picks a different strand. In brush tip, set flip horizontal to random for added variety. If your strands are drawing from the roots but you'd prefer to start from the ends, just change the angle by 180 degrees. Personally, I find drawing from the ends more intuitive and practical because your stroke defines the length of the hair. Using hair strand brushes, there are several ways to use them. For example, you can use subcolor only to draw without outlines and build the hairstyle silhouette, then fill in the gaps using lasso fill, and add a color border effect in the layer property palette. Draw more detailed strands with both main and subcolors, and erase areas with messy overlaps. These brushes are also great for long hair fluttering in the wind. Draw the strands on at least two layers, then blend the back layer into the background with a new clip layer in add glow or overlay mode. Check out my hair drawing tutorial for more on these effects. Want even more color variety? Try a gradient map adjustment layer to control the midtones and highlights. Conclusion Creating your own hairbrushes in CSP is easier than it looks. With just a bit of setup, you can create amazing, stylized hairbrushes that look detailed and polished while saving time. Whether you're working on a tight schedule or just want to explore new techniques, custom brushes are your best ally.